Hello, everybody. It's Mike Preston here at New Harbor. We wanted to reach out and just say a few words this week. We, you know, like to to say anything that we think is important that we think might be noteworthy, and we we try to keep it short and concise. This week, I want to focus primarily on gold and silver, the precious metal mining, um, both both the miners and the bullion markets. I'm speaking here on uh, Thursday, July twentieth. And gold and silver, they've been actually acting pretty well. The dollar has gotten a little bit weaker in the last couple of weeks. That could have something to do with it. I'm going to bring up some charts here in a minute. I just want to kind of go through gold and silver, the various ways that you might want to own it. And, um, you know, basically how to make sure that you're in balance with what we recommend. I'm going to share, I think I'm going to start by sharing the screen of the, the gold itself. So here's gold, and this is on a daily chart. I'm going to go out to a monthly chart because I really think that gold is probably the best chart that I can see across all kinds of different assets. This is a 20-year chart of gold, which has gone from roughly 346 up to just about 2,000. It's been a nice big move. It hasn't been a comfortable move. But overall, this is, again, one of the better-looking charts that, that we've seen. Gold had a previous high in 2011, and um, this was a pretty brutal bear market, 40% decline throughout the teens. And then the right side of this cup or saucer formation was formed here going into 2020, where we've been through this long three-year consolidation. And what you see here is a triple top, one, two, three. Some people will look at this and say that it's bearish, that gold has likely topped at around $2,100 an ounce, these things don't usually hold. This is almost certainly, although there's no guarantee, this is almost certainly a consolidation in gold that will yield to an upside breakout. I really think that gold is going to break through to the upside, and when it does, should move to roughly $2,500 or so in relatively short fashion. Again, impossible to predict that would happen for sure or how fast it would happen, but there's something to be said about the length of this consolidation and the fact that if and when it does break through that resistance, it could move pretty quickly. So overall, gold has tried everyone's patience for a long time, but it really looks good. And here we are all of a sudden again, just under 2000. That's at 1973 on the August futures. And so it would just take one or two good updates to break through 2000 again. And I really think that you might see some short covering and, uh, you know, and a pretty quick rally. If we look at gold stocks, they have been relatively uh, more disappointing in comparison. They have the same consolidation pattern here, a triangle, but they, they, they're off their highs. If they were trading where gold was at the recent highs, if, for instance, this is GDX, which can be used as a proxy to approximate the, the gold mining market, or at least the major companies in the gold mining index. And this should be up around 45 instead of 32. So they're trading at historic discounts. The market just doesn't seem to care about the miners right now. I think that'll change. If I think if bullion goes up towards 2,500, then you might see um, a, an ETF like GDX be closer to 50, 55. So I think there's a really good opportunity here. Silver looks really good too. Again, on a monthly chart, it's been consolidating for three years. And um, each time it's tried to break higher, it's been beaten back just like gold has. But here we have silver at 25, $25 an ounce. If gold breaks through 2000, and as I said earlier, that would likely make it head towards 2,500. Then silver will likely break above this, the, uh, the, the recent swing high here of 26 and move towards 30 plus. And I would only expect the miners to, you know, to, to follow along and take uh, to follow along in pursuit of that. So let me stop sharing here for just a minute and talk about ways to own gold and silver. What I just showed you is price charts, but I didn't really talk about how the average person should hold gold and silver. By far, the most preferable way to hold gold and silver and the way that we recommend that you hold gold and silver is in physical bullion form. 
And there's a number of different ways to, to, to hold that. We, we'll talk about that in just a second and what we recommend. But overall, an allocation of 5% to 10% makes sense of your investable assets. So if, if you happen to have a million dollars investable assets, let's say that would be $50,000 to $100,000 in gold and silver. If you have $100,000 in investable assets, that would be five to 10 per, five to 10,000. On the lower end, if your investable assets are lower, I think you can actually go to a higher percentage. So for instance, if you had $100,000 in investable assets, you could potentially go higher, maybe as high as $20,000 or 20%. This all depends upon your own personal tolerance for risk, your belief about the stability of the world, your ability to store the metal. But in general, I think 5 to 10% makes sense. So let's talk about storage for a minute uh, and other options for holding metals. And then we'll talk about how to buy it. So we've already said 5 to 10% makes sense. Where do you store it? A safe would be the best way to go. Number one recommended way to hold gold and silver would be where you can put your hands on it very quickly. So for most people, that's a safe uh, in the home or close to the home. If you're not comfortable with that, then a safe deposit box at a local bank is good. That's probably the second best in terms of how to hold it. Uh, a third best might be a depository, you know, which is often going to be far away, but a depository is going to give you a high level of safety and you don't have to worry about it there's good depositories in salt lake city new york austin texas and even overseas locations talk to us if you want to have that conversation other than that you're you're really forced into into thinking about different things like paper gold or securitized gold not necessarily our favorite but there's some really good options out there i think i'll, I'll hesitate to to give particular symbols or products um, but there's some very good ones that we recommend. Shoot us an email if you want to have a conversation or if you'd like a recommendation. But there's some pretty decent paper, gold, and silver products. Suffice it to say that the ones we like are backed indeed by the, by the real metal, and they can be converted to metal if you absolutely need to. Usually you can't convert to metal very easily because you'd have to take delivery of a full bar. But we do like the fact that they're actually backed by physical metal that's sitting in the vault. So when you buy, if you're gonna take our recommendation and take delivery of bullion, the best thing to do is to find a dealer that you trust and we can give recommendations if you'd like, but it doesn't really matter as long as you're working with a reputable dealer because the dealer's job is pretty simple. Gold and silver is, is just a very uh, fungible commodity. It's pretty much the same everywhere. And the dealer charges a relatively small spread to take your order Order that gold and silver from what's called a primary dealer. And the, by the way, the primary dealer buys from the, the mint that produces the coins, and then they deliver them to you. So you're going to pay about a 1%, you know, maybe, maybe there's going to be maybe about a 1% spread for the for the broker or the dealer in most places. So, but again, ask us if you want to have a recommendation. In the gold market, by far, in fact, the whole bullion market, by far the most common way to buy gold and silver is one ounce bullion coins and the three most popular are in this order american gold eagles canadian maple leafs and south african krugerrands those are the top three in my experience and so if we focus in on just gold for one minute the american gold eagle is by far the most popular and the most traded gold coin in the world for a long time, over the last couple of years, the premiums on American gold eagles were quite high uh, as compared to their competitors, the Canadian Maple Leafs and the South African Krugerrands. I've been looking at them lately, and they're only about you know maybe $20 more now per ounce than the Canadian Maple Leafs. So people that prefer American coins and they prefer the most popular, most liquid coin, I think they can buy the American gold eagle here. And they can do so with good conscience without paying too much of a premium. They come in mint tubes of 20. So if you want to buy a whole tube, that's about, it's a little over $40,000. An advantage of buying the, the other two popular coins, the Canadian Maple Leaf and the South African Krugerrands, is they come in mint tubes of 10 coins. So that's only about $20,000 each. It's not a really a big deal to buy the whole 
complete mint too, but some people like it. So amongst those top three, I don't really have much preference other than if you really care about an American coin, you can go ahead and buy the American Gold Eagle now. On the silver side, the American Silver Eagle still has a ridiculous premium. It's about $5 more per ounce just for the American Silver Eagle as compared to the um, the Silver Canadian Maple Leaf or the, or the Silver South African Krugerrand. So 99% of the time now we're recommending that people buy Canadian Maple Leaf coins. And by far the most popular way to buy them is in 500 ounce monster boxes. They're about 32 pounds or so, 33 pounds, somewhere in that area. And they're about the size of a big shoe box. So you could stack these in a closet. You can put them in your um, in, in a safe. But for most people, we're recommending about a two-thirds mix gold, one-third mix silver. So that might include something like, you know, $40,000 uh, of gold. That might be 20 American Eagles. And then maybe one monster box of silver, which is around 15K, 15,000 bucks. That would be around a, a $55,000 purchase. That would be one example. But again, if you want to talk about these things, just give us a call or shoot us an email. Um, lastly, some people say, why don't I just put everything in gold? The heck with it. I'm sick of this, this, uh, this market that seems permanently risky, that seems fake. Some people have done that. And honestly, it's hard to disagree that that might be the right thing. The problem is based on that chart I showed you a minute ago, it's, it was a really hard thing to sit through a 40% a decline that lasted more than 10 years. And anytime you put all of your eggs in one basket, you're exposing yourself to psychological risk financial risk, but even worse sometimes is the psychological risk. And in our opinion, just holding even 10% of your assets in gold and silver could be a life-changing difference if we have a real kind of crazy event happen. If you have $50,000 in gold and silver, and we have hyperinflation, for instance, and gold and silver goes up tenfold, you all of a sudden will have $500,000 worth of purchasing power for a lot of people, that probably pays off a mortgage if they have one. You know, they could, they can convert that gold and silver to pay off debt. In other words, so um, we think the best way to go is to have a more modest amount because we still think there's going to be opportunities in the stock market, which is why we're holding so much cash. We're still at about thirty-five to forty percent cash equivalents here. We do think there's going to be a, a drop in the market. There's going to be opportunities in the market, but we want you to have the the gold and silver piece in place. So give us a call if you want to talk about it. I know it keeps saying that, but that's what we're here for. Five, 10% bullion in the ways that I just talked about it. We have roughly 10% mining uh, shares in our model. So if we're right and the, and the mining shares go way up, then our clients will benefit as well. And uh, hopefully we see some opportunity because just a quick two, three uh, words on the stock market here. And then I'll close for the week. The stock market's been on a tear. In our opinion, it is the what is likely to be the last vestiges of this counter trend rally that started in October of 2022. But it has been pretty relentless. We've got just a handful of stocks that have been leading this market all year. And even though we've seen a little bit more participation amongst the broader market here, uh, there's just so many indicators that are telling us to be careful. Uh, we have all kinds of uh, ratios that tell us that bullishness is off the charts. I've got a lot of different charts I could share, but instead of sharing them, I think I'll just tell you, take my word for it. The bullishness has been off the charts and there's this, been this feeling that the market can't fail. Can't fail. It's been, literally been up most of the last 37 to 40 days, the last couple of months. So we'll see what happens. Um, we're making some moves to participate in a small way, but by by and large, we're still relatively neutral this market, only about 5% net stock exposure. So we want to continue to be really careful. We expect there to be some opportunities very soon. We hope so anyway, because it's been it's been a long road. Um, this this rally that's been pretty relentless that it really hasn't given people the chance you know, to, to get in in a safe way. But that's been a hallmark of this market for many years. And so we'll keep watching closely. 
And we will take opportunities when we get the chance. And we'll update you here every week when we do something different. For now, that, that's it for this week. I want to remind you, please, if you enjoy these updates and you'd like to be notified when we do something new, and we will be doing something new just about every week, please do subscribe to this channel. We just started it, trying to get it off the ground. Please subscribe, like the video as well, and we really appreciate you viewing and we appreciate your support. Until next week, thank you very much.